Hi students, this is the first edition of the upper limb video. Uh, only clinical anatomy, right? Okay, first one is the winging of the scapula. What is winging of the scapula? It is the, uh, everybody knows, right? Long thoracic nerve of bell. It is the only nerve which comes out from the root of the brachial plexus. And the root value is C5, C6, C7. These points are carry, these points only, they carry most of the marks. Okay, serratus anterior. Winging of the scapula means immediately serratus anterior should come in your mind. And it is supplied by the long thoracic nerve of bell. And also called as nerve to serratus anterior. And the root value is C5, C6, C7. And the, what is the action of the serratus anterior? It protracts the upper limb. Okay, so if it is injured, the nerve is injured, it may lead to winging of scapula. So in winging of scapula, what will happen? The medial border of the uh, scapula becomes very prominent. Understood? So these points we need. So root value, don't forget, this is the nerve which arises from the root of the brachial plexus. Don't write some cord and all. Okay, it is coming from the root of the brachial plexus and uh, the medial border becomes prominent in winging of the scapula. And then fracture surgical neck of the humerus. This is the area, quadrangular space. Here only your surgical neck is there. So the, which nerve winds around the surgical neck? This is your axillary nerve. So if the axillary nerve is injured, uh, it supplies the deltoid obviously so what happens the deltoid action is compromised so action of the deltoid is 15 to 90 degree abduction so the surgical neck of um, humerus fracture leads to the axial nerve injury which in the, uh, leads to the deltoid uh, uh, dysfunction and the patient will not be able to abduct his shoulder only 15 to 90 degree so 0 to 15 degree abduction is caused by supraspinatus that the student should know above 90 degree overhead abduction is also caused it is caused by serratus anterior and uh, trapezius together and then this is the eps palsy eps point you should know where is the eps point eps point is uh, this one c5 c6 nerve trunk they join together and forms the upper uh, these two roots they join together and forms the upper trunk just now we saw the long thoracic nerve of bell that is serratus anterior c5 c6 7 c7 these three roots they form the long thoracic nerve of bell this is the eps point the nerves coming from the eps point upper part you have supra uh, scapula nerve and lower part nerve to subclavius sub means below supra means above and then this anterior division of the uh, upper and the middle uh, division they join together and forms a lateral cord LML the branches caressing from the rasa cord are lateral pectoral nerve and musculocutaneous nerve and lateral root of median nerve so every student uh, must have read about uh, this anyway this is a short revision about this so please don't write this m as medial pectoral nerve this is musculocutaneous nerve because we are going to write the eps point with this nerve only musculocutaneous musculocutaneous is the nerve of the and anterior compartment of arm so muscles in the anterior compartment of arm is biceps and brachialis the most important biceps and the biceps is a powerful supinator so with that only we are going to talk about the eps point so eps point is upper trunk of brachial plexus nerves involved we saw and birth injury and the position of the limb is weight is tip receiving position and the limb position is extended pronated medially rotated and adducted you keep the position and then just check how it is extended why it is pronated that and all you have to write it in this tabular column so all the students are expected to draw this tabular column okay right suprascapula now supplies supra supraspinatus and infraspinatus supraspinatus action is abduct 0 to 15 degree abduction so the palsy leads to adductor injury leads to adductor limb and then infraspinatus action wherever you see a muscle is in oblique direction it gives a movement called rotation since it is attached to the uh, greater tubercle greater tubercle is on the lateral side it leads to lateral rotation this is how you have to read the movements of the shoulder joint and then so if it is paralyzed it may lead to medial rotation and then now to subclavius supply subclavius and it stabilizes the shoulder joint if it doesn't stabilize if it is injured what will happen drooping of the shoulder and the musculocutaneous nerve supplies biceps brachialis and coracobrachialis so biceps is a powerful supinator so if it is injured it may lead to pronation and brachialis is extension uh, flexion of the elbow brachialis action is flexion so if the action is uh, compromised it may lead to extension so this tabular column is very important you pause the video and see the tabular column again and then the third one is the wrist drop radial nerve in the axilla radial nerve in the spiral root 
anywhere if the nerve is injured it may lead to wrist drop why the wrist is dropped is um, the radial nerve supplies the extensor compartment of the arm as well as the forearm so extensor muscles they give the extension of the wrist joint so what happens if the radial nerve is paralyzed injured it may lead to the paralysis of the extensor muscles of the arm as well as the forearm so what happens uh, the wrist cannot be extended it is flexed that is called as wrist drop understood radial nerve supplies the extension of the same thing okay this is the radial spiral groove the components of the spiral groove are radial nerve and profunda brachii artery and um, the uh, triangle this is the low triangular space bounded by a uh, long head of uh, triceps and uh, teres major and here is the uh, shaft of the humerus right so shaft of the humerus long head is medially placed and then shaft of the humerus is lateral and superiorly you have the teres major these are the boundaries of the lower triangular space and carpal tunnel syndrome so many videos we talked about the carpal tunnel syndrome this picture we want all the students should draw this picture you have to draw the four carpal bones and then you have to draw the flexor retinaculum the structures on the flexor retinaculum such structures below the flexor retinaculum the most importantly you have the ulnar bursa as well as the radial bursa ulnar bursa four flexor digitorum superficial tendon and four flexor digitorum profundus tendon and here in the radial bursa you have the flexor pollicis longus tendon in between you have the median nerve on the above structures from medial to lateral please don't make any confusion in this the outermost one is here ulnar nerve and then ulnar artery followed by and then palmar is longus tendon palmar cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve is this side palmar cutaneous branch of median nerve is this side to top on the top five so flexor retinaculum also you are supposed to write this and uh, median nerve ca causes compression of median nerve carries one mark if you write compression of median nerve and then second mark goes to dislocation of the lunate myxedema and other conditions which compresses the median nerve so two marks you have got third uh, thing goes to the median nerve supplies your thinar muscle this is your thinar right so thinar muscles and lateral to lumbricals and sensory of lateral three and a half fingers so this carries three and a half marks over next one and a half marks is for your clinical application point palsy leads to wasting of the thinar muscle so opposition of the thumb won't be possible so it may lead to ape thumb deformity and sensi plus skin over the thinar amina so totally if you write this alone you will get four and a half marks and mediate cubital vein is rarely asked and uh, it is uh, communication of the basilic vein with the cephalic vein and it lies on this bicepital aponeurosis and used for intravenous infusions and then mammary gland you might have read the mammary gland essay but i wanted to know i would like to stress some important points clinical points you have suspensory ligament of cooper which extends from the skin to the deep fascia right over the pectoralis major so my question is if there is any metastatic carcinomatous tissue extends and enters into the suspensory ligament of cooper it will pull the skin a bit it means the ligament is getting shortened if the ligament is getting shortened since it is attached to the skin it may lead to puckering of the skin and uh, pudi orange and puckering of the skin students they get confused this is because of the pulling of the skin inwards that is puckering of the skin and if the suspensory ligament of lou cooper is laxed in old age what will happen the breast sag it is the reason for the sagging of the breast and then second thing is you have the retro mammary space this ha contains the fat tissue it gives mobility to the breast and uh, in cancerous tissues cancerous metastatic tissue may encroach that area it may lead to the loss of mobility and you have the skin over the breast contains subcutaneous lymphatics if the metastatic tissue enters into the subcutaneous lymphatics it may lead to a uh, subcutaneous day orange like a peel of an orange and mastectomy surgical removal and the central node of you have uh, uh, lateral group of nodes and anterior group of nodes and posterior group of nodes central group of nodes and all these nodes they drain into the apical nodes so students should write anterior group of nodes it lies along which vein lateral anterior group of nodes superior thoracic vein lateral group of nodes lies along the axillary vein and posterior group of nodes subscapular vein anterior group uh, you can write as it lies along the lateral thoracic vein and uh, uh, and uh, central group of nodes will be lying in the center of the axilla 
through that only intercostal brachial nerve goes and communicates second intercostal nerve communicates with the via the intercostal brachial nerve it communicates with the median cutaneous nerve of arm so if the lady is having lymphadenopathy this enlarged lymph nodes may compress the intercostal brachial nerve this may lead to the pain along the medial aspect of the arm because of the compression of the medial cutaneous nerve of arm this intercostal brachial is mcq from the second intercostal nerve uh, lateral branch of second intercostal nerve communicates with the medial cutaneous nerve of arm and crook and buck's tumor is nothing but the the spillage of the metastatic tissue from the inferior quadrant of the breast and uh, to the pelvic cavity that spread is called as transcelomic spread so it lies and spills over the pelvic organs that tumor is called as crook and buck's tumor so these are the important clinical anatomy and rotator cuff injury supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subsits muscle this t is teres minor don't say this as teres major and then this uh, muscle may get injured and uh, hansen's disease is the inflammation of the ulna nerve is mcq this is mcq ulna nerve which can be palpated behind the medial epicondyle the same condition in the lower limb which nerve is inflamed deep peroneal this question will be asked in the viva and then mallet finger and buttonia deformity of the division of the extensor digitorum at the distal interphalangeal joint this joint is called as distal interphalangeal joint so extensor expansion will is attached to the uh, this is the extensor expansion right this is your finger this is your finger so here is your um, proximal phalanx middle phalanx distal phalanx so this is the dorsal aspect so this is the uh, triangular um, spread of the extensor digitorum tendon the central slip is attached to the middle phalanx and the lateral slips are going towards the distal phalanx so what happens the division of the extensor digitorum at the distal interphalangeal joint causes this much this type of finger flexion of the terminal phalanx this is called as mallet finger and button your deformity is the rupture of the central slip the what happens flexion at the proximal interphalangeal joint and extension at the distal interphalangeal joint look at the difference between two you put uh, the picture in your uh, finger and then again uh, try to revise how the central slip is if it is damaged what will happen uh, and the distal slip if it is damaged what will happen and this is the extensor expansion look at the central slip it is on the middle phalanx so if it is injured so this side you cannot do the flexion so flexion of the proximal and extension of the distal and mallet finger the distal uh, pip is injured so what will happen you cannot extend this so it will be flexed so keep this image and again you read and then pulp space infection is called phalon this is the pulp space right this space is pulp space because it is tightly arranged segments with fat loculations are there so if there is any pus or something it compresses the terminal branches of the arteries so it may lead to avascular necrosis of the distal phalanx and space of perona is the space between the flexor tendons of the forearm in your forearm between the flexor tendons and forearm bones which bone radius and ulna between that two there is a space this space is communicated with the mic palmar space and claw hand student should write ulnar claw hand and medial claw hand because ulna nerve also it supplies so look at this all the all uh, to the la, medial to lumbricals and all the intrashe muscles and the hypothenar muscles everything is supplied by the deep branch of ulna nerve so injury to this nerve may lead to flexion see because the action of lumbricals extension of the um, metacarpophalangeal joint and uh, flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joint and extension of the interphalangeal joint so ulta action if it is paralyzed you just put the opposite action okay and then me median claw hand me because median nerve supplies the uh, lateral two lumbricals and the thenar eminence so that may lead to again that is also leads to claw hand so both the claw hands together it is called total claw hand so students should write both the nerves right thank you